What's going on gamers? Today we're going over how to install Twilight Forest onto your client and server and we're going to show you what it's all about. Before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell in order to stay updated on all of our Minecraft videos. Minecraft is really about exploring and visiting many different dimensions to find different things, but that can get kind of boring after a while, especially if you've played it so many times. I mean, how often do you really get excited putting in Ender Eyes nowadays? Introducing the Twilight Forest mod. With new mobs all over the place, as well as a bunch of new bosses and a lot to explore, you're bound to have a lot of fun with this mod. To get started with this process, you'll first need to have Forge installed for your game type, so head down to the description of this video where you can find Twilight Forest as well as our Forge installer and any other links that you may need. Once you've installed Forge, you can go ahead and come back here when you're done. From here, we're going to go to a new tab in Google and we're going to type in Twilight Forest. And this will take us to a results page that likely has CurseForge as one of the main first options. So select the CurseForge link to Twilight Forest. Then when you're on this page, you'll select the Files button next to Description. Once that's loaded up, you're going to scroll down to where you see Recent Files, and on the far right side of that, you'll see View All. You're gonna select that. You can select whatever version of the game you want from here, but I'm using 1.16.5, so I'm going to select the latest version of that and hit the orange download button. From here, I'm going to open up my Windows search tab and type in percent app data percent. A new folder will open up and you're going to enter the .minecraft folder, then find mods in that folder. And from here, you're going to open up the section where you have your downloaded Twilight mod and you're going to click and drag the mod folder into the actual mods folder. This is what will get your mod running. To install it on your server, you'll first need to head to your Apex panel and make sure that you're running a Forge world. So scroll to Jar File field and make sure you're selecting Forge for whatever version of Minecraft you're using. So I'm using 1.16.5, so that's what I'll be selecting. Now you're going to click the red stop button to stop your server. And once it's stopped, you're going to head to the left hand side where you see FTP file access and go ahead and select that. From here, you can type in your password for your Apex panel, or if you have a cache password, you can just select that and hit the login button. From here, you're going to click the mods folder that appears. Then on the left side, one more time, you'll select upload. Now open up your downloads folder and click and drag the file into the add file section. And once it goes from zero to hundred, which may take a little bit, you're going to head back to the main page of your panel by clicking on your server's name at the top and then you'll go ahead and start or restart your server to get these fixes changed and running up on your server. Now let's talk about the mod. First, you need to build the portal in order to see what the mod has to offer. So get a water bucket, a two by two square, and fill it up as if it were an infinite water source. From here, you can take any type of flower or shrubbery and surround the portal with that many flowers. I personally like the blue orchids because just look how pretty they are. Anyway, once you have that all settled, you're going to toss a diamond in to the portal and it will actually open up with a strike of lightning and unfortunately burn all my flowers. That's not very nice. Let me just go and replace this one. Anyway, this is your new portal and this is how you get to the Twilight Forest. All you have to do from here is quite literally jump in. So once you're prepped, go ahead and do that. Now, you'll see a few things when you first enter this forest. The most obvious thing is Eternal Night. It is the Twilight Forest after all, so even if you were to run a command, it would still stay nighttime. Next, let's talk about some of the boss enclosures that you might see. This, amongst other things, can be found pretty much everywhere. It's a lot of fun to explore, and I highly encourage you get started, but the first thing you want to do before you actually get too deep into the woods is mark down your coordinates. It's just the safe way to get back to the portal. Once you're done with that, now we can talk about some of the more interesting things about the Twilight Forest. First is generated buildings, and as you can see, I'm entering the back of this house kind of the wrong way, but there's a spawner and a skeleton that we'll talk about later inside the house. 
Hello, skeleton. Aside from just looking generally cool, there can be loot in some of these places. And for me, I like the chicken, so that's what I went for. Next, let's actually talk about some of the mobs that you can encounter. The first one is the Red Cap Goblin. Now, most of these mobs that we talk about are going to be hostile. As you can see, the goblin attacked me as soon as I switched to survival, but he didn't have too much help. Next, let's talk about that skeleton that we saw earlier. This is the skeleton druid, and like its overworld counterpart, it shoots things, but not arrows this time, instead poison blasts. The next mob we'll talk about is the minotaur. Now, this guy is just all bad news. Even if you have your shield up, he'll still do a half heart of damage when he swings at you. And as you can see, he charges pretty quickly. So you definitely want to keep your distance if you can from this guy, or make sure you're really armored up. The next guy we're going to talk about doesn't typically spawn on top of trees, rather in caves. This is the cave troll. And what he does is attack surprisingly fast, actually, and he does a lot of damage if you're not careful. I tried running away here, but he catches up to me pretty quickly, and he actually does half a bar of damage, and that's including wearing netherite armor. So just make sure you're prepared. The next one we're going to talk about is the Goblin Knight. This one's actually just kind of funny overall. It is two goblins stacked on top of each other, and though they may look funny, they will still hurt you very badly. So what you need to do for this mob is try to take out the bottom half first. This will make an opening in order for you to be able to attack the top goblin who is impenetrable until you take out the bottom one. So you need to definitely make sure that you're attacking with your crosshair on the bottom half Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. But once you finally get them all the way taken out, then it just kind of turns into a funny little scene. Once you've cleaned that up, the next thing we'll talk about is the Carmenite Golem. This less nice iron golem will attack on sight, and it can also throw you in the air if you're not careful. And it also has a ton of health. So make sure that you're prepared to attack and retreat as necessary. Once you finally do, he will drop some iron, but keep in mind, you need to prepare yourself. Finally, let's talk about the Alpha Yeti. This guy's kind of like a mini boss, but do not trifle with him if you don't have to. He throws you up in the air for fun, and he has no problem with that. He also will throw ice blasts at you, which can do some pretty dangerous damage if you get stuck in them. The active spots for the ice blasts are where the snow is falling on top of it. Frankly, I don't want to keep trying to take him out in survival, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to go ahead and do a little work here. Now let's talk about some common issues. The first one is a version mismatch, and this is something along the lines of what you would see. Basically what this means is you are either running the wrong version of the mod or the wrong version of the game. All you need to do is make sure that your forge version matches your mod version. So I'm running 1.16.5, so that's what I should use. The next common issue is sometimes your server can get stuck starting. All you do is head to your server console and type in slash FML confirm while it's stuck. And this will run some things on our end once you've typed it in. And once those things are done running, you'll see that the server should be up and running no problem. Overall, there's a lot to do with this mod. And it may be simple, but it's definitely a lot of fun and definitely one of the classics. Whether you're fighting bosses or exploring, what you do with your time is surely going to be good. Well, that'll do it for this one, gamers. As always, I hope that you have lots of fun. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more great content like this, then subscribe or click these videos. Until next time, gamers.